Hey what's up guys so flutter just released version 1.20 in this stable channel and there are a lot of changes um, but we'll talk about some of the most important changes in this release and before we do that let's see how you can upgrade to the latest channel so you will uh, either you will be using windows linux or uh, mac os you'll go to your terminal and uh, you have to run this command which is flutter upgrade so flutter upgrade is the command and you can upgrade to the latest version so if i'll show you what's my latest version as of now so i can run flutter doctor and i can see uh, what version i'm running so as you can see the version i'm running is flutter channel stable 1.20.0 which is the latest one which just got released apart from this uh, dart 2.9 version is also released um, that has also some changes and the most important thing here if you use visual studio code then there is uh, the new release for visual studio code as well so if you see here so version 3.13.2 has been released for visual studio code as well so you can check it out there are a lot of um, changes which happened in this version uh, especially in terms of tooling so we'll check all these things uh, so let's start with our first update so the first update has been done on uh, the autofill side so autofill is one of the requested feature which uh, uh, most many people like you know uh, requested for so you can see autofill part one and uh, there are like a couple of, of votes here and this is this is basically has been merged so now um, you will get support for auto filling it's uh, it's it's in a pretty basic state i guess but yeah uh, by the time you will use it there will be more updates probably so auto fill is definitely one of the things which which probably most of the users would want so that's why it has been added um, to this particular release second thing i want to talk about here is uh, interactive viewer so there is a new widget which can help you in uh, panning and zooming things so i can give you a demonstration here so uh, if you see here there is uh, this my stateless widget and then there is something called interactive viewer as you can see here probably interactive viewer takes boundary margin minimum scale maximum scale and then you can have any kind of children so right now i am having a sized box uh, with the uh, 200 width 200 height and 200 width and uh, the child is flutter logo so now what can happen if i'll like uh, if i'll have my mouse here because i'm using web so i can you can see i can uh, zoom in zoom out using my uh, mouse cursor and similarly i can drag it as well so all these things uh, can be easily done using this interactive viewer there's a separate talk as well on this uh, which you can watch on uh, youtube on chicago flutter youtube channel and uh, you can get uh, get to see you know what what uh, exactly you can achieve with this thing but just for the demo this is what you can do then there's mouse cursor support as well which has been added to um, this particular release and especially if you are someone who is supporting web then it can be really really useful and for web mouse cursor support was very much needed and they have finally added it and uh, i think this is this is one of the uh, things which uh, which uh, i am pretty excited about to test it out although um for um flutter stream day and uh, android stream day i made the web version of flutter app and i have used uh, the mouse cursor support in zooming and in highlighting so in hovering all those things so you can check it out for sure um it's pretty good and you can even use it on mobile apps as well so please check it out the fourth thing which we'll talk about here is uh, time picker and date picker so they have updated few things first thing they have updated is uh, range slider and a normal slider for material slider i mean and then material time and date picker they have been up upgraded as well in terms of new designs so as you can see for the demo here that i have this uh, flutter time picker dot firebase app dot com so if i'll select time here so right now the time selected time 9 51 am it is saying so i can just you can see like how how good it is like you know on the left hand side there is like this digital clock and on the right hand side you get some, some analog kind of experience which is pretty good and you can switch to text input mode as well which is again not bad and i can just write something like this so this is uh, running on web but you can do similar stuff on mobile as well 
then uh, there are some couple of tweaks dark mode slow motion text scale and all these things so yeah yeah check it out it's it's pretty good so this is just the time picker similarly um you can uh, use date picker which has been upgraded as well so this is again a welcome change in terms of features then there is a new uh, license page so uh, but basically it's the uh, same license page but the problem with license page was that uh, you know uh, for responsive design or for web it was not uh, really good looking or maybe there were some some issues with that although i have never used licenses on my web application as of now but i i am sure that there were some issues and uh, this pr which is 57588 fixes that uh, so new license page and uh, it's pretty good um, i'll i'll talk about all the prs after this so um, there are so many changes which happened um and there are so many prs which got merged so the next thing is basically uh, flutter team has said that uh, they have merged almost 3029 prs and uh, they have closed almost 5485 issues and uh, there has been 359 contributors as well which is really a good number and they are also saying that it's kind of the biggest release especially um in last few months or maybe in last uh, in, during this last uh, um year as well as this year 2020 so um then the next thing is that um the flutter vs code extension okay so if we go to vs code you have to go to settings so you can see i am using flutter 1.20 here um you, you can be in dev channel beta channel and master channel as well and this will be definitely there and i in fact tweeted about it that they have added in vs code embedding of the dev tools so basically how you can enable it so you have to go to settings first and uh, you can go to settings and here you can write let's say uh, embedded embedded so you can see dart preview embedded dev tools so if you check it then um, the dev tools will be open inside visual studio code rather than you know opening in a different window in a chrome so that's that's really good um it's not always good to be honest for my side like sometimes i really want to open it um, on a separate window so that if i have a small screen then i will probably you know have different tabs to switch them but if you have a large screen or if you are using monitor which is maybe 27 inch 32 inch or even more than that then this can be really really handy that you have your code here and then uh, there is a dart uh, preview tool here on the right hand side uh, dev tool which which you can definitely uh, use for so many things um, in android studio it's a different thing but in, in vs studio uh, vs code it is definitely a good thing so um there is one more thing which happened that um, they have um, improved the support for auto import so basically what used to happen is that when you let's say when you move this file from one place to let's say some other place then the file gets moved but the import does not gets changed so that's that's kind of pathetic and for that particular thing i used to open android studio for these kind of changes but now you can do the same thing with vs code um so when you change the location of your file from one folder to another then the the import will automatically be changed the team also talked about uh, that uh, they um, so last time when they shared about 1.17 uh, flutter 1.17 i i made a video on that as well at that time they mentioned that uh, they got ar around 50000 uh, flutter apps on play store and now they are claiming that uh, it's it's now somewhere around 90000 so you can see the number of developers who are coming for flutter are increasing every day and they are making apps in flutter so that's a good thing as well um and uh, another update is that the tree shaking was not being performed properly there were some performance issues uh, if you'll check it out uh, so they have improved it so uh, like um, yeah so that's the thing i mean now um if it, it will perform tree shaking and the things which you are not using the icon fonts which you are not using they will help you using tree shaking to reduce the app size by 100 kb probably web benchmark has been improved by 15 times 
so obviously that means that uh, performance has been the main key again for this particular release and um, you will you will get uh, so many performance related stuff or prof performance related improvements uh, so web if you are using flutter for web which is still in beta then also you will get so many um, kind of you know improvements there as well um, then they also mentioned uh, that uh, in Dart 2.9 they uh, recently announced tunnel safety support which we probably know which you might be knowing so if you see here sound null safety which is still in work it's not yet uh, finalized um, it's still in work uh, you can check it out uh, using dartpad with null safety and uh, you can check how it works and everything but apart from that they have released 2.9 where they what what they have improved is speed of decoding of utf8 and uh, it has like improved a lot um, so for english uh, text it has improved by 100% and for chinese for 400% that's what they mentioned so yes decoding has been fast uh, the speed of decoding in dart 2.9 then the next thing which they talked about for um, for someone who wants who using who is using platform channels a lot so they have released this uh, new um, package which is pigeon so I don't know when it got released it, it, it might be here for some time now I have not used it yet but uh, you probably probably want to get uh, used to it so what it does it, it's basically a code generator tool as you can uh, read here and uh, it helps you in um, like when, when when you communicate between flutter and your host platform let's say android ios and all you have to be very much uh, you know um, uh, for that uh, like type safety you have to be very much concerned because uh, you have to mention specifically things like if you want to use a string at both the places or at three of the places let's say uh, you are sending string from flutter to android as well as from on ios so you have to you know match those arguments in terms of you have to specify their types specifically so this tools helps you in getting rid of that although it says that it generally it's only supporting um, objective c code for uses on ios and java code for android and then um, uh, maybe they will um, it, it, they will directly support uh, swift and uh, kotlin support so yeah let's see let's see how that goes but yeah if you are interested in this then you can definitely check it out the example for this so it, it can be found in video player plugin which they have been using uh, themselves so you can definitely check it out the next update is with the metadata so if you are again uh, if you are creating a flutter tool or something they have released a uh, full uh, metadata or catalog of the widgets so there are around uh, what what they mention around like 395 total widgets and this is the metadata which you can found um, so for every widget there is like parent uh, what is the library of that widget and uh, what is the description of the widget so it's a catalog of 395 widgets if I'm not wrong and um, so you can check it out as, and also um, there is like one uh, metadata for material and cupert you know dot json which is basically the color mapping of the values of the colors which we use in material or cupert you know um, then similar thing for icons as well what icons has been um, like people are using in material and what icons are using people using in cupert you know and this color scheme is what uh, people use uh, when they make uh, you know support for plugins let's say where you can see the color uh, in the left hand side so that's why when you use this then this color has been used by ids to you know show the uh, color so that's one of the uh, update regarding metadata then um, for again for package um, like developers um, there is like uh, the legacy power spec format has been removed and now uh, basically you have to adopt to this new format uh, which is basically I think uh, most of the people has been already using but the main target is that uh, this this uh, particular format specifies what flutter version it supports specifically let's say flutter version should be greater than 1.12.0 so it uh, this arrived uh, uh, during the flutter 1.12.0 announcement so flutter versions prior to 1.12 did not support this so yeah that's that's one of the things which you have to keep in mind otherwise uh, your when you will try to run pub publish it will give you some error and the way to fix it is probably for uh, following this current format so yeah that's that's one or um, more more the um, best uh, best thing which uh, they could do to you know let people know what kind of 
version they need what version ex exactly they need to run this particular flutter package then obviously there was some performance issues so yeah you can see here um, they have reduced the shader compilation jank on mobile so basically what was happening is that when you you know run your application for the first time and so the animations were kind of janky and uh, uh, like after subsequent uh, starts they become like you know better or uh, smooth but now they have fixed this issue and uh, there was some performance uh, issue uh, that's why they were not able to fix it but now they have fixed it and um, so you can like read about it directly on the flutter.dev website doc slash puff slash rendering slash shader and uh, you can check it out uh, the entire thread how it works and uh, what are the limitation and considerations so yeah that's that's a good change as well and apart from that they have said that uh, they will be working more on ads web view and uh, maps plugin all these plugins to improve them in the future as well and then uh, you might be knowing already about this announcement where google partnered with canonical to bring flutter apps to linux so that's again one of the um, like you can say um, partnership which happened which will help uh, linux users uh, desktop users and uh, desktop they are working on desktop as well so there are a lot of announcements which might be coming very soon about desktop so yeah that's pretty much uh, about uh, it guys and uh, these are all the changes the major changes there are many more changes which happen but these are kind of the changes which which may, makes more sense and which which might be very much useful for you so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did press the like button subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon to get future updates and i'll see in the next uh, flutter video bye bye take care and keep fluttering